Welcome to Layback with Betfair. Joined by the A-Team, we're back. Hello and welcome to a Caulfield Cup edition of Layback with Betfair. We're going to focus on the 10 race card from Caulfield this weekend. The two people here that are going to help me do it is none other than the Prince of Packenham, Reese Goodwin, and a very sharp looking Tom Haylock. You look really well, Tommy. How are you, mate? Oh, could have been better, but uh, we're here. Done some form, so we'll see how we go. You've you referred yourself as dragging yourself off the canvas like Wishlaw Last did last weekend to, to get here today. Is that right? Correct. Picked myself up off the bathroom floor and off. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Oh, it's we're good. good to see. Yeah, we're it's good. good to see. We thought we didn't know what we we're going to do without you, Tommy. No, <laughs> except for find someone else. <laughs> <laughs> we, had a, we had a few things in place. <laughs> um, good segue into the lay bin. Uh, let's get into it this week. Um, I'm going to kick things off with the lay bin. I'm going to start off with Tom. Sure. Now I know you have been on the bathroom floor. You've had to drag. You've had to drag yourself off to get here. But just a little bit of a press, a no. little bit of an iron. This is a video podcast. Wouldn't go astray. It is. There's there's more creases in that than I've ever seen in my it's life. It's linen. Shirt. And tune into Spotify so you don't have to look at it. Um, <laughs> Oh, you're just lucky I'm here, mate. To be oh, oh, we're blessed. <laughs> we're absolutely blessed, I love it. aren't I we? Love it. Um, what do you got for us, Tommy? Uh, didn't you have something else, or you're not going to run with that now? No, I'm going to run with it, okay. but I'm going to come back to me. Um, Bit of yeah, ping pong well, here. Sitting at, uh, on the TV yesterday and watched the stable rep for Matthew Smith's stable with Wonder Each come in, so pre-race. Um, this is at Kensington, where every lead has won in the last three meetings there, basically. Basically a firm two track, hard to make ground, and they've come in and said, we're trying to teach Wonder Each, which is one of the quickest horses in the country, let's try and teach it to settle today. We'll just put it in a nice position and try and educate it. Well, you had a trial between runs and you sent it straight at the front. You led the trial by four, <laughs> won the trial by eight. That's the time to maybe educate the horse. Not on a f- Do they not like winning, trainers? It is, what's your take Sometimes. on this? Well, yeah. The That's way, ridiculous. The way you're it? explaining it sounds very one-sided. There might be two sides to the story. What? They don't like winning? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I can't speak It is for ridiculous. Them. It is. Was there a drift in the market? No. Nah. Oh. So they didn't tell oh, anyone. slightly, but it came for the favourite there, oh, which was also okay. pathetic. But it is in. <laughs> well, no, I I'm play devil's advocate on that. I watched the races yesterday at Caulfield. Shock them over. A very exciting win. Different style of horse. But Alex Ray spoke in his post race interview around the need to educate. They didn't mind what the result was that day. Now it turns out shock them over too good for them. One well, mm. lovely ride by Willow, pinching gaps. But there was the education process in <clears> that. So. The pressure of race day, very different, am I right, Reese? to well, to a trial at Gosford. Well, I saw it was to party mm. before the, the uh, feature and they're trying to get him to settle, but we're talking about the quickest, one of the quickest mm. horses in the country. Speed is key. Let fast Just horses let be fast. fast horses run. Particularly mm. around the Kenzo track. Correct. As it's, I love that you brought send it up. Send it to Randwick when the rail's in true and it's actually good to make ground down the middle. Yeah. Like I love that you brought up Shockamover because... It was interesting, Alex, great young trainer, great bloke, doing a terrific job with that horse. He he said after the race that he's they're teaching the horse the best way to be ridden, but I would probably argue that they, if they're going to be going up and grading, wanted to win some big races, they're eventually going to have to put him into the race mm-hmm. and can't just keep riding him cold at the back because we all know that you know, horses on speed are at a huge advantage or <clears> at some <throat> advantage, and I think credit where credit's due for a horse like Mr. Brightside and their team, that he was a horse they used to have to always ride back and, and let him run on and he, he always seemed a length or two below. Now they've been putting him in races and, and look at the, the result they're getting. Yeah. So, look what they did with Anno. Yes, Anno's yes, record exactly, when he said on yeah, the first four correct. was, almost, I think he only lost one race. Yeah. And then you retired him. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that was a highlight. <laughs> it was. Uh, I've got something else for the lay bin, just um, the gold trip news this week. Mm. It's been exhausting. Mm. So I, I'm... Does he run? <laughs> If it's a good three, probably not. <laughs> Too soon. Um, but my Twitter algorithm, first of all, happy to say goodbye to Trade Radio and Trade Week, Better and now it's TikTok just been, algorithm. and now it's just been replaced with racing media creeping into those areas. <clears throat> if, if you're not first, you're last, trying to break yeah. the story on where things are going. Who cares? Just wait till acceptances. There we'll was, all find out. There was a few, There's no rush. There was Everyone f- will find out. It's all good. <laughs> Once he got in the field, there was a few tweets floating around who was going to ride him, and there was a few <laughs> confirmed Hugh Bowman, and I'm, I could yeah. see the field, and I could see Ben Mallon was on. I was like, field gone off early here. <laughs> they even had the 
right or wrong? <laughs> I did love on dot com yesterday. They did it was a it was a really great broadcast. They did the barrier draw and then they interviewed jockeys about their chances and they, they didn't interviewed even know. Ben Mellum and he's like, You've drawn eleven on cold trip and he's like, What do you think about this? He's like, I just found out twenty minutes ago I'm riding the horse. I haven't really had a chance to have a look yet. So he's a last up winner. Was, I think he might be a chance. <laughs> there was plenty to unpack there. Oh, um I could talk about these sorts of things um all day, but we've got ten of I was going to say the best. It's not a bad undercard. The Caulfield Cup is a, is a great addition, I think, and it runs really deep in terms of talent and, and chances. But we will preview every race. So it's going to be uh, a great insight, I hope, for this show for a lot of people that might head along to the track on Saturday, tune in from home. We're going to go through 1 to 10, and we'll start off, uh, Tommy, we might talk about the track because we've had the rail true, then what were we, plus 12 or whatever on um, yep. yesterday at Caulfield, and then we're going back to plus 3 on Saturday for Cup Day. Yeah, rail out three, uh, as you said, true, 12, back to three. Um, the wind's the biggest factor, and we saw that with Saturday early in the day. Um, off fence with cover running line was suited earlier in the day at Caulfield with that westerly wind, and we've got a similar breeze, probably not as strong. I don't think it'll have a huge effect, but you didn't want to be fence or rails in run across the side when the wind kicks up. So um, off fence was, was probably advantageous. I think the track will play pretty well. Um, the wind's probably not as strong as it was last Saturday. What's it have to get up to to have a real effect? Are we talking like 25K plus? 25, 30K plus. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Um, I heard the track manager talk about that as well uh, ahead of yesterday's meeting at Caulfield, and he said that was about right. So, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a fascinating story within a story with the track, isn't it? We'll get to it when we talk about the cup, but if there is an upgrade through the day and there's belting weather outside at the mm. moment, then we're, it's inevitable that there's going to be an upgrade and how that might affect some of these runners like Gold Trip. So mm. that'll be good to chat about. Um, just the 94 acceptors this year across the 10 races too, um, compared to the 124 from last year, um, and that was a nine race card. Don't know what to read into there, but there's some competitive little fields and we'll dissect and we'll start off in race number one, which is a for the three-year-olds, Colts and Geldings, set weights plus penalties, 1,400 metres. Um, any time Tommy, you got an opinion on this race, mate? Yeah, interesting. The speed looks to come from the two Waterhouse runners, so they won't go too hard. They'll control the tempo. You see often in Sydney when this, this happens, they just literally they talk to each other, the jockeys, and don't want to go too hard. So um, I think a, a moderate tempo, that's the instructor and Kaizad. <laughs> uh, I went looking for Brave Mead. Clearly, um, best figures, gets the right sit. One third up last campaign, ready for the 1,400 metres. I think he's suited. Barry won a little bit of a query for mine. Um, fantastic, fresh, high rating race behind to party. I am always wary of these Sydney horses coming down and Kaizad scares me a lot. So I've got some Brave Mead on top from Kaizad. Um, if I was forced to bet, probably Kaizad um, just a bit better value, but Brave Mead on top. Yeah, no, I'm going with him too. I think we're all siding with him. Um, I think he's been crucified uh, by the barriers more than anything, his first two runs. Mm. I think a lot of people would probably argue it's Zara's fault, but at the end of the day, if he drew gates one, two or three, he would have been in a great spot. I'd argue he probably should have beat Sapati first up, in my opinion. Um, he's been great. He gets onto a bigger track. He's drawn one, which could be a concern, but I just think I think his issue has, has been he's been drawing wide and almost beginning too well, mm. and then Zara's having to sort of get him to he come back. He well last time and then ended up... Second yeah, last, which is probably a bit confusing for everyone, but I'm guessing they probably didn't have him completely screwed down. They were small fields. It all become a bit tactical affair. And that was a night at the Valley too, where it was advantageous to be on speed. It was a yeah. fast track. Track yeah. records were being broken. He he still got home in the fastest last yeah. 600 metres of that race after having to be jagged back at the start. He covered so, a lot of ground. He was yeah. pretty good yeah, late. He was massive. Uh, yep. Yep. So, he couldn't have ran any quicker his last 600, and Stapati basically ran the same time. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really keen on him, and I just hope he can find the back of the two Waterhouse runners from one, um, and then things should just work out from there. They're probably, as you mentioned, Tom, the two clear dangers. If they take him a long way into the straight, he's probably just got to pop off their heels at some stage. And I think bad luck's probably the only thing that beats him. I think he's I think he's better than these. And that price probably pretty fair for someone like me who doesn't like taking those type of odds. Yeah, and like, I just want to make mention of Kandinsky <coughs> Abstract as well. If, no, this, the, if, this, well, if this horse hasn't cost $3 million, like it's a 10 to 1 chance again. It's just... Mm. Com- continually disappointing and it's being priced on its actual tag. I don't think I'll bet for the rest of the day if it wins. Because I've been with him. Helps. I've, been with him I've been with him his first two and I was really keying up for him. I, I Didn't could, you tip him last start? Yep, or? last two, I think. Yeah. Last two, yeah. <laughs> Agreed. And that's why I will Sorry, look, like, that up. I'll look like an <laughs> absolute clown if it wins. I should stick with him because it's three times. I feel like that's a rule. You stick with him three times. Um, he does get up to 1,400, but still it doesn't really map well for him. They'll probably ride him. Um, negative, the blinkers come back off, which 
I don't know, they, I'm guessing they're using that as the excuse as to why he didn't run well, but it didn't look like he overdid it or anything like that. And he was still very poor, so um, be interested to see how it goes anyway. Yep, so we're with uh, Brave Mead anyway, Reese Looks like Tom's shouldering arms, according to this sheet, although he's sort of, I think he's had a bit of a dip each way. with yeah. a, I could, I could back both Brave Mead and save KZ, maybe. Okay, well, yeah. let's head to race two. Um, it's the Group 3 Caulfield Classic for the three-year-olds, 2,000 metres. So eight acceptors in the field. Um, Riff Rocket, well, he's following the same path as Mr. Maestro last year. Big win in the Superimpose, then took care of him in this race. Uh, he presents here at a dollar forty. He's opened up on the corporate, so <coughs> he's also all in two fifty favourite for the Vic Derby. So mm-hmm. that win in the Superimpose, it was that of a serious racehorse, wasn't it? He got home fastest last four hundred metres of the entire meeting, yeah. running away from him through the line, five and a half lengths. Um, it's it's really hard to back against a horse like that, isn't it? And I, I don't know if you guys can find an angle here. Gold Bullion, last start winner over eighteen hundred as well, um, has a Vic double to his name. That doesn't rate anywhere near Riff Rocket, um, hence the discrepancy in the market. Do you guys have any angles in this race? I'll start with you, Reese. Yeah, look, I was with Gates last week and they scratched from a wide draw, which is probably fair enough. They find a smaller field here. They're probably, the Moody Coleman stable will probably realise they can't beat him today, uh, sorry, Saturday, over 1,800. But I'm, I am going to have something on in the place for sure. He's roughly $3, the place fixed odds. Um, lovely, lovely horse. I really like him and I think he'll make it to the derby. And I think you're saying 250 for Riff Rocket at the moment. I think he's about $15 in the derby and I think he'll start much, much closer after Saturday's run. So I don't think he can turn the tables. I don't, sorry, I don't think he can beat Riff Rocket Saturday, but I, I think over 2,500 around Flemington, there might be a little bit of a different result. So I'm really keen to see how he goes on the weekend and uh, can spec in the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the speed's interesting here. Does Do they cross on Gold Bullion? Um, and does it lead Sunset to be handy? Yeah. Um, Riff Rocket Barry one's <clears throat> probably the only way he gets beaten, really. If he gets well, it's roadblocks, in- yeah, it's interesting. It, it it is and it isn't because I I think I don't know if he's actually been properly tested at a proper staying trip. Like obviously he's going to go to a derby and he's every chance to to win the derby. But it was a great recipe the <clears> other day <throat> because he actually got held up into the straight and then got a clear run and that's when he really accelerated. Mm. So I think gate one and away is good because he might still get bottled up and all he's going to need is a bit of room not too far from home and he's clearly got a great turn of speed. So you're saying you'll get a softer run at yep. the 2000? Yep. Yeah, and I yep. think Blake Shin will identify that on goal bullion and like whilst, yep. you know, he, I reckon he'll kick up um, and hold the lead from sunsets and, and set yeah. the tempo. I, I'm just really interested if for some reason we get to a derby and this is a he's drawn wide and they get a really high pressure... Derby for some reason, then it really has to show what type of stayer he is because I think last start showed that he's got a great 400 on him. Yep. You know, he was held yep. up and then he got the splits and he just dead set accelerated it and, and left them standing and he's ran the quickest last 400 of the meeting. So that's generally not the statistics of a stayer. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see when he does get to the Derby. Mm. So you're saying he'll get a similar run to last yep. time and just, he's just the gaps too got sharp. To open. Like, yeah. 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 Well, I don't know if I could take a dollar forty five about mm. a horse that lands in the death seat, but... Mm. Um, God bullying the only other danger for mine. Yep. Yeah, no run for me. I'll be watching watching that race. Let's head to race three. It's the Group Three Ethereal Stakes for the three-year-old fillies. Run over two thousand metres, and it's one of the key lead-up races. This as well to the VRC Oaks, uh, along obviously with the Wakeful uh, Renaissance Woman won the race last year. Daisies in twenty twenty one, and Chica Fuerte in twenty twenty. Uh, it's I've got it as a real race in two for me. The market agrees. Tropical Squall, Autumn Angel. They look the clear on toppers. Here, um, just from a speed perspective, Tommy, um, it looks like Tropical Squall will cross from 12, Saxon Beauty to kick up from one. Connor will be handy along with another you, Grinzinger Bell with the inside draw too. How are you seeing the race? Yeah, I, I like the barrier for the favourite. I think um, it will be very hard to beat Tropical Squall, too good last start, rated really well, um, crosses leads. Going to be hard to beat. Um, Connor is an interesting horse. Needs every bit of 2,000 metres, I, I believe. It was brave. Just got up last start at Mooney Valley, but dead set looking for 2,000 metres now. Tropical Squall on top. Do I want to take a dollar ninety two bucks? Uh, maybe two twenty. I could take two thirty. But I think that's what enough. they opened too. I heard them speaking mm. that they went up about two thirty, two forty, and he was she was crunched straight away. Clearly, mm. rates better than these handicap. Like she's conceding weight to all of them. She's 104 handicap rated horse, and the next best is like 73. So. Clearly, um, clearly going places. She's a nice horse. Yeah, it's a really sort of tricky 
early start to the card, isn't it? These race two, three, you don't want to be diving in too early and keeping your powder somewhat dry because, you know, these three-year-olds, they're looking for further, mm. can they handle the trip, how the race is going to be run. It can be quite difficult. It's also, you're taking a dollar ninety about a horse that, like, we don't know how the Sydney fillies really tie into a lot of these. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is tricky. Um, I, I'm not having a bet in this race, but Connasana, you're a bit of a fan of, Tom, and you mentioned her, she was scratched on the Saturday and won on the Friday night. She's done a good job, 1,800 back to 1,600 to win, mm. um, and now gets back up to 2,000 being a done deal filly. So I, it just wouldn't shock me that she finishes a lot closer to this favourite considering the price. I mean, you're getting $8, her $1.90 um, Gay's horse. So and I think she could probably sit possibly outside Gay's horse cross and she'll be camped right near it. So, I mean, it's an interesting race, all these fillies getting up to 2,000, and that, that's the unknown. You know, Sydney form, clashy with Melbourne form, and they all get to 2,000 basically for the first time. <laughs> yep. Um, let's head now to race number four, the listed Gothic Stakes, another three-year-old race, 1,200 metres. Sandpaper won the race last year for Jamie Carr, Godolphin, at 8 bucks fifty from Angry Skies and Custodian. Just looking at the map here, it looks like the speed's going to be on in this race. There's a lot of natural speed um, drawn here. You've got the likes of um, Arkansas Kid can kick up from one. Fasol looks a leader. Dark Halo led them up and was really impressive on debut. Um, in Sydney, Critique, Perilous Fighter. There's Prince Zero from three. There's speed everywhere, Tommy. There is. There's a lot of speed and uh, Waterhouse only knows one way. So you'd think Critique would be right up there, mate. Yeah. I find it interesting as well. There's a couple of... There's only two genuine sort of um, off midfield back markers mm. in the race. Don Corleone is one of them. Uh, Treasure Way is the other who we've spoken about a little bit on this yeah. show, Reese. So I'm actually... I, I don't... I've got it pinned in two at the top in terms of winning hopes. I like um, Facile, Dark Halo. Um, I do actually give Arkansas Kids some chance as well. Always goes around about of a price. Um, Facile is really impressive first up um, over 1,100 metres at Warwick Farm. Burnt the candle at both ends in terms of through a fast run race. And that was only off, uh, off the one jump out. The second horse in that race was Jolie Star who went on to run second to Arctic Glamour. So the form stacks up around Facile. Dark Halo trolled like a real smart one um, and then backed it up at Wyong on debut. So hard to sort of quantify where his ceiling is. Um, so I'm just going to stay out of that, but I'm going to make, a, I'm going to have a lay bet here. I'm actually going to lay Don Corleone. I think he's um, he's too short at four bucks. Um, he's five out of nine starts for this guy has been in group one races. So he's got some class about him in terms of where he's been competing. He never runs terribly, but he sort of lacks that killer instinct to actually win a race. And uh, I'm just against him here, given his map. I think he's going to have, um, I think he's going to be well back on the fence mm -hmm. and he's going to have several roadblocks given the, given the setup and speed of the race. So I think four bucks is short and I'm prepared to lay Don Corleone in the, in the Gothic. Well, I'm going to cite with Dark Halo and basically just citing off, I'll be honest, I just watched this replay and thought, gee, that was a smart win. Uh, third horse, Keenan, come out and won well yesterday at the Kenzo track. Mm. Tommy, how did that win at Myong rate and look for you? Yeah, it was good. Um, nice horse. Yeah. Um, I don't have a huge opinion in this race. I found the map quite hard. Like Fasol, I was against Fasol to a degree at the price last start. Mm -hmm. um, this is a horse that had two-year-old form around Lazago learning to fly, cigar flick, Blanc de Blanc. Where are they now? Yeah. Um, and he stepped out at dollar forty-five. So I don't really want to be with Fasol, but she's she's obviously speedy and talented. But I don't know how much pressure she can absorb here. So. Um, yeah, that Wyong win rated quite well, um, just to, has to improve a little bit to, to be really competitive in, the, yeah. in this race. So any improvement from that, Dark Halo's got a chance, but where does she get to? Um, also, where does with, he get to? Sorry, so. out of that 1200 meter shoot, do you not panic so much about cover running in a straight line and just the one corner? You know, you don't want to be fighting a horse, dragging it back just to fight cover, cover just to find cover. Sorry, you'd rather be maybe three and four deep. Um, Especially if the wind's doing yeah. what it did on mm. Saturday as well. That's what I was just thinking you for can, a few of these. They're probably all going to jump out and look at each other, and there could be a line of four or five. Can settle outside late, Dark mm. Halo potentially. Um, not a race I'm keen on. Yeah, he drifted a bit too on debut. Dark Halo opened it in the red and drifted to sort of 220. And, yeah, he's going to have to, similar boat to Fasso, he's going to have to absorb some real serious race day pressure here. This mm. is a long way from a Wyong maiden. Um, but, yeah, just a lay bet for me. No plays for you guys in, in the Gothic. Dark Halo. 
Jack Haley. Um, you are with Jack Haley. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Um, race number five is the Group 2000 Guineas Prelude. It's for the three-year-old fillies. Um, obviously, with the 1,000 guineas thrown to the November 18 meeting, this race is now run on the Cup Day. So um, you've got Miss Finland in 2006, Irish Lights 2009. They're the only fillies to do the Prelude Guineas double. Um, the speed here looks very good again, and it's a very open affair. Tommy, have you landed on one here for us, mate? Uh, I haven't done the race in huge detail, but I'm very interested in this bottom weight here, Matawai. New Zealander, I've had something on for the 1,000 guineas at 100s. The debut win in New Zealand. We didn't get that message. Was really, sorry guys, that was in my friend's group. Other while groups. Was, um, was while he was sick. <laughs> uh, the win was really good. Impressive win over um, over the ditch. So uh, I'm really interested to see how Matawai stacks up. Um, yeah, I'm not too keen on the race, but I'll be cheering home this horse at 50s. It's probably worth a bet, to be fair, this yep. New Zealander. It, I didn't realise it was such big prices. Looks uh, like there's already been a bit of support for it. And and looks like it's settled on speed in New Zealand. So the gate one, you know, yep. not too worried about getting oh. back on the fence. Hopefully it can be fairly close to the speed. Gets a soft run if the track's playing okay. <coughs> yep. um, I think she can really measure up. So 50s at the moment, you might get 50, 60 bucks on Betfair. Worth a spec. There's a stack of angles in this race mm. too. You've got Lovely Looking, who is aptly named because she's been exactly that in her two starts in Adelaide, 1,050, 1,250 metre uh, wins. Um, she led them up off a slow tempo last start and um, her last 600 ran some 10 lengths, you know, inside benchmark. So she's a pretty serious, she got a pretty serious turn of foot. So she's an interesting entity. You've got the other form line of like Coer Volante, I think Inhibition's Bossy Nick, they were the trifecta through that race at the Valley there. Um, she found a way. It's a very open market. I'm actually Siding with one at a bit of value here. I've got a lot of time for this filly. Um, number 14, Moesha, for the Coleman and Moody Yard. She, I think she's just got so much ability. She went for the cheap kill at Hamilton, two back. We spoke about it. Reese Moods went down there to Strapper, which yeah, <laughs> Moods doesn't go to Hamilton to strap too many. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> um, the the runners in behind that race too have actually somewhat franked that yeah. Hamilton form. Ode to Joy won at Kilmore, and I know this is different gravy, but it's always good to see oh, a little bit of substance added yeah. to a win like that. Last start, Moesha went to Sandown. That was on Sandown Stakes Day, and she was a good thing licked. She mm -hmm. was blocked for runs everywhere she went. She was under four grips going through the line behind an arsehole of horses. <laughs> she was <laughs> she was really struggling to get out. Can we crop that up? Yeah, we can. Um, I don't even know what that means, <laughs> but I she, like it. We'll roll with it. <laughs> I don't need to talk about asshole. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I've, I've unsettled the panel here. I thought that's here. why he dropped it. It's that's taken so... 20 minutes to get a smile out of Tom Haylock. <laughs> <laughs> if I just knew I had to so drop, the, drop the bumhole bomb, I would have gone earlier. Um, <laughs> but seriously, if she got out, she, I'm confident she wins she that race. Yeah. And if she wins that race, she's not $13 here on Saturday. So we're getting a price about her. Um, and I think she's a, an excellent one by three play in the thousand guineas prelude. I find this completely impossible. And um, there is there's so many ways to look at this race. And there's so many that it would not shock me if they won or ran very well at a price. The one I just want to give a mention to is Rose of Shalar. Go back and watch the first up run down the straight behind She's All Shenanigans, mm. which produced Stretton Angel, Good form, which mate. is great form. It's capped on teams. Correct. Um, you have to watch that run. It doesn't look great on paper. You have to watch. She was great through the line. The tr the draw is tricky, but the price she is 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 obviously you, can, you don't have to have a lot on to get something back. But I thought it was a dead set dark job. Dark job this race. She was two hundred set day. There you go. Um, as all as a really interesting horse. There's yep. a horse that started six dollars in a um, JJ Atkins yeah, yeah. Sprint one last start Correct. over a mile. Yeah. Her trial's been all right. So after don't tell me they haven't got her here ready to go. First I, up. I'm Tim Clark on. Yeah, I'm probably saving as well. I think something. How's the King Colorado form stacked up since then? I thought it was pretty race. good. Yeah, yeah, I good. yeah, yeah. I thought, he's good. Yeah, is he going to Cox Plate? Might they be. want to. They want to. He he's got to get in. Hmm. He's got to get in. They got to pick him. But he was good the other day. Straight out. They'll the trick. pick him. Yep. Will they? Yep. Okay. Yep. Could have three year olds. It's that sort of year where we can. Where we're going to see one. Yeah. Probably. Could be three. Um, race number six, the Group 2 Caulfield Sprint. It's a handicap, 1,000 metres. Asfura beat home Kalos in Generation last year, Oxley Road in 2021, and Graf in 2020. 
Uh, my best bet of the day comes here, boys. I'm really bullish about one in this race. I'm really bullish about the chances of Spacewalk here. Um, he comes through a very slowly run 1,000 metre benchmark 100 race at Warwick Farm, settled back in the field, and, and once James McDonald asked for an effort, well, showed a real sharp turn of acceleration, come home over 10 lengths faster than the all benchmark for the last 600, fastest overall last 800 of the meet. Um, looks soft on the line. Remains at 1,000. There's going to be a little bit more speed here, though, which I think still sets up. Um, I heard Sam Friedman on Melbourne Radio RSN this morning talk about how they're going to ride Midwest in this race. Yep. Is, um, was a bit critical of Wiramu Pin's ride. Last start was a bit too cute with a horse that doesn't have a turn of foot, needs to go straight to the front, fly the lids and be hard to run down. I think that sets up perfectly for Spacewalk. So um, in a day where I'm just going to be specking a few horses, uh, he's certainly my best in, in Melbourne. Um, I'm I'm strongly I'm not having a, a bet in this race. I'm having a strong lay. I'm I'm well against Lofty Strike. Mm. Never raced at a thousand. Um, he only jumped out on Monday which I also don't like. Uh, I don't mind it for horses sort of 14, 1600, maybe mid prep, um, but I don't like it for him jumping out on the Monday and then wanting to run him over a thousand on the Saturday. Can I ask from a trainer's perspective, is that because you want him fresh for a thousand? You don't want that time? Yeah. Like if he's running I, for a thousand first time, wouldn't you like two weeks yeah, between? I'm certainly not going to argue with Julius Sandu about what he's done with the horse he's because he, he clearly knows what he's and doing. And first up. Yeah, it, it, I just thought it was a, an interesting setup, and it's just a setup that I, I don't like myself yeah. personally to, to trial him. And let's let's not just say he just trialed. Ollie, you know, give, give him a little slap up. It wasn't if he was dead set swinging off him out the back, had a really quiet trial. He did run second, and he was tested a little bit. Um, and also, I don't think he trialed brilliantly either. Like mm. there was uh, there was a little bit of doubt on how he trialed. I thought, and then now there's a little bit of doubt on me running him under a week into Saturday at a trip that he's never run at, let alone obviously won at. So, I think he was a, a I think he's a huge risk at that price, and I think he's already drifted in the market since the prices went up yesterday. So I'm I'm just strong against him, and and good luck to the rest of them. Yeah. Um, what do you make of his jump out? So obviously the wink is gone <coughs> the first time, the blinkers are off, which is interesting, over a 1,000 metres for a horse with an impeccable record. Uh, trialled or jumped out with no headgear. Yep. So they took the blinkers off first, jump out. I thought he was okay. Then the winkers went on second, jump out, and he probably wasn't as good as the first. He was behind Lombardo when the blinkers came. Do you reckon they were tinkering with that and they just wanted to trial him with the winkers on before the... Yep. Because you reckon that's what Definitely. it was? Yep. That's why they've Absolutely. rushed that trial in with the winkers on yep. before race day. 100%. So that's interesting. Um, I agree with you. Spacewalk probably settles outside Lofty Strike, and he might have to go right around him here to, to win from an inside-ish barrier, or it might be last the fence. So um, I went looking for Generation. I went looking for Midwest. I didn't like the form through Spacewalk, but concede. Um, <coughs> I just kept coming back to him. He, he does look the horse yeah. to beat. Jamie Carr is going awful at the moment, and that's a huge concern. There's no bigger... We had a dollar um, for every time we've had Tom say that on the show so mm, far. He's, he's going at 11% strike rate at negative 54% profit on Tino. He's even brought stats so this week she's still, <laughs> she's still heavily marked as a jockey, go-to jockey by markets, but she's not performing. So um, she's not riding at her best. It's sad <coughs> to see because she was such a good jockey. Um, she'll think, get there in time. I think she gets a mulligan given the comeback and the fall. That's got to absolutely oh, correct. the confidence. And it's, it's, hard, yeah. it's hard to put on how long do you give her before she does. 12 summer. months for me. Okay. I'm All not right. potting it. It's not that hard to put a number on it then. <laughs> <laughs> he just plucks one like that. He's been thinking about this. Yeah, I have. I have. I've had, this, months to, of the I've day, had this discussion <laughs> and it's like, oh, I, I can't even... I can't even imagine what it would be like. To, yeah, that's right. Oh, we we spoke like about that. it too, yeah. But yeah. it's everything. It's confidence to go between horses. It's balance. It's depth perception. It's all sorts of like it, it, Yeah, it'd take a long time. So, But the market hasn't reacted, and that's where I'm coming from. Mm. We're a punting show, and I'm yep. talking about that. So um, she's still very, very firm in a lot of markets. Mm. Um, the Jamie Carr fact is still well alive. But um, I would have loved, like if J-Mac's on here, I'd declare space walk. Um, <clears> but he's off. So um, horse to beat. Good setup. Yeah, I'm making lofty strike a lay as well, just cool. for yeah. just to echo I those reasons that you said. Yeah, I think he'll be. I think he's the best horse in the race, mm. but he'll be savage he in the line, and he'll be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we head to 
the quaddy legs and tackle the last four races at Caulfield. Just want to talk quickly about Gambling Harm Awareness Week, which it's this week and we're all ambassadors for it here at Betfair. It's so important to just talk, share, support amongst your mates, have some really, um, have some really locked in strategies in place um, to make sure that you are gambling within your means, betting responsibly, whether that's uh, deposit limits, tracking your results. These are some things that I do. Um, it's so important to have a plan. You're in place because we love the great game, but you don't want it to get a hold of you from that component. It's really important that you talk about it as well with your friends. Um, boys, we'll head to trainer of the week now, which this segment has been kept on ice for some time, but Reese assured Tom and I before the show that this could be the best edition yet of trainer of the week. Reese, over to you. Yeah, we're heading all the way to Manangatang. Um, can don't you, ask, can don't, you spell it? No, nah, and I couldn't tell you exactly where it is either. <laughs> yeah. It's fair to say I definitely haven't been there. But uh, they had their it's cup at, meeting. It's just west of Swan Hill. You been there, have you? No, I looked it up on the map the right, other day. Okay. I was interested. Good homework from you. I haven't even been to Swan Hill. <laughs> anyway, it looked a picturesque day. It looked really good. I, I was quite intrigued. There was They still had marquees on the inside um, of the track, which I feel like a lot of tracks don't have these days. And it looked like they drew a really good crowd. So it might be something we can Bucket get list. to. Bucket list. Is it no, mate. Well, no. Wasn't picnics aren't on TV. Layback live show, Menangatang yeah. Cup. I think it's got a good, Lock us good, in. good will to it. And let's see who can um, spell it out. <laughs> uh, anyway, the cup winner, man from Uncle. He, uh, he's been on a long trip this horse. He started in Sydney. I can't, I can't actually tell you who trained him in Sydney, but he was a group two winner of the Hobartville. He hadn't won in over four years, not far off five years, and he broke through and won the Menangatang Cup for Dane Smith on the weekend, which I think is a, a really good effort. I know Dane's had him for quite some time now. I know he was previously with a trainer in Victoria and he had a lot of barrier issues and it wasn't in the barriers, it was getting him in. I know they had a lot of issues getting him to um, just to load. So I know he had to pass a lot of trials, three in a row. They've done a terrific job to get this horse back to the races, let alone winning. Um, and I think it was a pretty exciting time for them. So good on them and a great training effort, I thought. Ten-year-old, is he? Uh, at least. Yeah, at least. He's ten. He it's, might have a pension, I'd say. He's yeah. been around a while. I was trying to remember who. He's um, had six or seven trainers. Yeah, he's done a good job. <laughs> yeah. well. trained him Started in. off with DK. Wood. I mean, I know, speaking for myself, older horses that had a lot of trainers and had a lot of problems. To get them back in winning mm. form is very tough. So Where's he trained out of? Uh, Stall. Stall, yep. yeah, there you go. Yep, Stall. He's, he's, Dane's a terrific horseman. He rode. He rides a lot of work uh, before he was even training himself. I know he rode a lot of work uh, at Caulfield. He rode a lot of the difficult horses, and yep. that's why he got this particular horse, Man From Uncle, because he deals with difficult horses. And him and his partner, Heidi, do a terrific job out there, and I think they would have been pretty thrilled with the Nangatang Cup for that horse. Yeah, brilliant. Um, good addition, mate. <clears throat> Let's head into race number seven now, the Group 2 Tristark Stakes. It's for the mares, uh, 1,400 metres it's run over. Chain of Lightning won the race last year, Colette in 2021, and Madame Rouge back in 2020. Just speed-wise, doesn't look to be too much on paper here. Skew if might kick up and lead. Call Die, uh, wrote to Arataki's a versatile mare, uh, revolutionary miss. <coughs> I'm intrigued to see what they do with Saint Magique first time 1,400 metres, Tommy. Yeah, it's an interesting map, isn't it? Waltz and Bly probably the leader. Um, Skewiff just camped behind, I think. I don't, I don't think you can lead on Skewiff. We said prior to that Flemington run that this is a horse that's got a short turn of foot and probably needs that suck run and can get that if it's behind. Um, a horse like Waltz on Bly just suck up and, and ping and that's um, the chance for Skewiff. I've learnt the way of called Die here. Um, I don't really like the horse, but the form's okay. Um, it was really good last time behind Magic Time. It was three deep throughout, and it was an absolute fencing run day. Every horse that ran top four was fencing run basically the whole day. He was three deep. Um, he had cover behind Revolutionary Miss, who was in this race as well. Um, ties in, obviously, but Cool Die went straight past um, Revolutionary Miss, and I've just learnt the way at $13 uh, on Cool Die here. Same as Jeek's figures are good enough to win this. Um, 1,400 metres around the bend again now. Um, little query, but um, she's got to be a chance. But called die one by three or each way. Mm. I'm I'm really keen skew if um, she jumped it. She also jumped out on Monday. Yep. Interestingly, basically led the jump out and and ran away with it under light riding. Now we obviously knocked Lofty Strike for jumping out on a Monday, leading into the Saturday. But I think it's a complete different setup. She missed the run, mm. and she had to troll because um, she had to be passed again. But I think this is. A, a lovely setup. She's she's missed the run. She's had a good clean hit out um, Monday morning, and then this sets up nicely for fourteen hundred. I, I am really keen on how they ride her because 
Her last few runs have been in really big fields in New Zealand, so they probably haven't wanted to bustle her up to have her in the spot because there's probably been a little bit of pressure there. I, yeah, I, I, I would really love them to take the bulls by the horn and possibly lead this up because I don't think there's a stack of pressure. And I'd I still hate... know she's got the turn of... Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I completely not... understand, but yeah. it was interesting the way the jump out played out mm. that she... They didn't worry about finding a bum. And, of course, jump outs are completely different to yeah, race yeah. day. Well, but I think they might be able to open themselves up to some more opportunities here if they, as I said, take the bulls by the horn, treat her like she's the best horse in the race with all this upside yeah. and see what she can do from the top. Oh, well, you can park the jump out. Her last start, she's a group one winner in the Tarzino mm. over there. She beat home the likes of Dragon <coughs> Leap. Um, Legato, uh, yeah. who's, a, Legato yeah. who's a four dollar fifty favourite in the Golden, Golden Eagle. Eagle. So, yeah. and there was some really solid New Zealand Group One performers in behind. So, I'm petrified of Skewif. Mm. I want to see mm. what they do with um, Skewif late. Yeah. Uh, and I might have something yep. on there and sort of save. But the other thing I'm a little bit reserved about is all her recent really good form is on stop tracks with Sting out of it, mm. and we're quite clearly not going to get this at Caulfield, let alone at race seven. Could but, be a three by seven. But yeah, that's right. And the only I was sort of having a look through, and and she's had some good track runs. Don't don't get me wrong, that were really good. She actually has a second to Legato on, on good ground, but that was the prep before. So, you know, you've got to be a little bit reserved with mares like this. If she does get onto a really firm deck, she, you know, she might turn it up a little bit, but I hope she's just the best horse in the Even race. those stewards reports didn't extend in a... <laughs> there you go. You've gone into the New Zealand stewards reports. No, I just... Oh, no, that's right. what we might see after... Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm going to throw in a different entity here. I, I'm siding with Waltz on by in this race. So I love the way she finished off last start in the Rose of Kingston. She ran the fastest last 200 of the race. She got home for fourth behind Life <coughs> Lessons, Princess Grace, just to name two there. Um, last time she was third up, she won the listed Bendigo Guineas and ran a new peak figure. Now, she's run up to that figure last start, and that was in her second up run. So I'm expecting her to improve again here and be very hard to beat. I like that she's drawn softer. Tommy mentioned that, you know, she's a potential speed influence. Barrier 4, D-Lane on, who's just absolutely on fire at the moment, can be more positive. Back him in to sum it up. I think she's a really good player, around 6 bucks 50 waltz on by to uh, be peaking in her preparation. Race number 8, the Group 3 Munga. Stakes. We'll go with Moonga. Moonga. Yep. Moonga. It's not Mumba. <laughs> I think Rhonda Birchmore's the queen of Mumba this year, Tommy. Just You'd to be calling yourself just the to. King, I, think, so. I think Rob Mills is the king. Just to um, just some quality information here on layback. We've got it all. The form for everything. Uh, this is a <laughs> race over fourteen hundred metres. It's Group Three. Aegon won the race last year for Andrew Forsman from Buffalo River and Wild Planet. Uh, Buffalo River, Nunthorpe, Climbing Star. Um, they can all be prominent. Um, Fender at a big price in behind the speed. I found this a really hard race to assess. I wanted to find out TiVo. Um, not sure on the drop back in trip. Nunthorpe's going well, has been scratched for various races and, and finds this with a key jockey booking of Blake Shin. Um, Tommy, what are your thoughts? Yeah, key negatives on every horse yeah, I went looking for. It was yeah. tricky. Like I went looking for our TV, it just maps awkwardly from that barrier. What did you think of the drop back in trip? Yeah, well, from that barrier, um, makes it really tricky. So like, where does it get to? It could be near last, very deep or, or whatever. So that's a query for me. Um, Nunthorpe had every possible chance last start. I went 13.5 lengths slower than class benchmark to the 600, the first three and ran, run, did ran you go, one, two, three. Did your girl go too slow on it? She rode it very well, but she didn't have to go around anything. So Is this any sort of significant jockey change? Oh, it's a nice jockey change, isn't it? Um, Blake Shin riding very well. Um, <laughs> but that's that's the they're the horses you want Jamie Carr on at the moment. Oh, she right. can just use her balance and lead and, yep. and not have to do too much. And um, But I just couldn't have Nunthorpe going so slow. Now finds a race with Buffalo River, <coughs> pouring the pressure on. Completely different setup. If I, was, I, I want... Looking for Times Square, but trialled awful. Um, ratings are good enough. Not disgraced in a group Did one you... when we last saw it, but needs a wet track. Yeah, have you seen the recent jump out? Yeah. Was on a five, mm. not quite as heavy. She's the one I really want to earmark to see what she does because the jump out at Cranbourne was terrific, really good, but she hasn't won on any other than heavy ground. Mm. But, again, like from a trainer's point of view, you've got to, out of all the stables in Australia, Ma used to, she's probably going to back in that if they're going to front her up on a good track Saturday, there's a chance they think she's, you know, pretty sound and in good nick because, like, she's even been kept safe in the market. And her last, their two runs in Australia haven't been brilliant, have they? And then her run before she come from overseas was a win on a heavy 10. So, 
No, um, but I, I don't think many of these would finish seventh that's in the green of the yeah, turf as well. Um, yeah, I really went looking for Times Square. Mm. I really big market watch for me. Yep. The stable, if the money comes for Times Square, I'll be yep. jumping on. Um, I give Buffalo River a, a big chance as well. Um, up on speed, rock hard fit. Yep. yep. Hey, let's get to race nine now. The Group One Caulfield Cup. 2,400 metres, run under handicap conditions. Durston obviously won the race last year, um, carrying 51.5 kilos from Gold Trip. Knight's order, stuck on for third. It's a real uh, ex-Europeans versus sort of current Europeans mm. in, in this market with a hint of Japanese flavour thrown there in there too. Horse in it? Out of the top 12 runners in the market, 11 of them have started their careers outside Australia. So Montefilia is the only one at 14s. So that's yeah. the exception. So it's a fascinating addition. We, we spoke at the top of the show, the noise around Gold Trip. We still don't know if you'll go there, if there's that track upgrade comes throughout the day. Um, the, certainly the stable would be well within their rights to scratch him on a three with a Cox Plate and a potential Melbourne Cup in the works. Mm. Um, I think there's just... Great angles everywhere in this race. So West, the Turnbull Stakes form, West Wind Blows, I thought was absolutely fantastic that day. Um, Solcombs had a fantastic preparation. Um, you've got the likes of Without a Fight, who was a real catcher in the Underwood. The break up the Japanese stay is interesting. Valiant King, Akita Sushi for the O'Brien Yard. It's just, yeah, there's, it's, I'm not sure where to look in this race at the moment. It's, it's really, it's going to be really fun to dissect. I'm, I'm keen to hear your thoughts, Tommy, on, on where you've landed in, in the Caulfield Cup this year. Yeah, um, speed looks good. Goldman back in trip, didn't lead in the Bart Cummings, which was interesting. So, um, meet Chum with 52, Dessa there, right up. Right up there, Spirit Ridge, I think, is the outright leader. Then you've got Breakup kicking up from Barrier 5 and be probably just behind lead. Um, where have I gone? I'm against Gold Trip at the price. <coughs> good track. I hope they run here and I hope it's a good three and then I'll be more against him. Um, because cool. he just had a perfect setup in the Turnbull. Yes, he was brilliant. It was a dominant win. He's a star. Absolutely very, very good horse. Uh, but I'd rather him sting out. Now, obviously, he ran second in this race last year on a soft seven. Firm track's a big query, and he's got to concede weight to a lot of others. I thought without a fight, I'm um, sorry. Um, right, West Wind Blows was as good as him in that term. Well, wrong, like, just high-pressure race. pressure was on early, wasn't it? He was so game. If Bad ja ride. If, if Jamie Spencer finds three wide no cover from barrier two in the, Corf, in the Corf in the Corf Cup, I'm going to I'm gonna give this game away. Yeah, he can't. can't leave surely he can't. Down. <laughs> he can't do too much. I'm gonna have a word to Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> we want him gone. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he can't from Barry too. He can't stuff it up. Surely. Yeah. Um, but gee, he's not a go-to jockey here in Australia, Jamie Spencer. But mm. that run was superb by Westwind Blows. I'm sticking with without a fight. Now this horse ran the fastest: 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, and 200 in the Underwood. And he was still checking off hills with 200 metres to go. He was 11th at the 200. Um, to run fifth was outstanding. He does meet. Solcom, right you are, non-conformist, worse of the weights. Two kilos and two and a half kilos to right you are, but solid improvement. This was always a plan. Come into the Caulfield Cup, second up. Last campaign, second up, he had a rating good enough to win this in the Q22. I think he's here to run really, really well, and obviously I've had a big opinion of this horse every start here in Australia. So I thought it was fantastic. I'm sticking with him. West Wind blows, big chance. Solcom ties in as well. So... They're my three major players. I could save break up. Um, I don't know what I'll do if Gold Trip doesn't run because mm. then I can't back three or four horses. So a bit tricky. He's a, gen he's a genuine Japanese B grader break up. Yeah, usually good reports. enough. But yeah, well, <laughs> that's, right. that's a scary thing. <laughs> and there's proper things in his favour around can sustain fast tempos Fair and track. love firm decks. No, I think so you, got to you get a good you get a good three. Like he, he he's not he's not being left out of my quaddy, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm playing the race I'm backing, I've got a couple of bets. I'm going to back uh, West Wind Blows. I just thought the dress rehearsal in the Turnbull Stakes was exceptional. Yep. Gets three kilos off Gold Trip from that run. Um, he was first up in Australia that day, sustained a three-wide run, punched the breeze, fast tempo, able to stick on for second. Quality stayer. Complete different setup here out to 2,400. Um, drawn much kinder. We joke about Jamie Spencer, but he he has drawn much kinder and will get a softer softer map. So, um, yeah, keen west wind blows. And then I'm going to have something small as well on Valiant King. Mate, he drew a very seven last start. Not much kinder. Yeah. Jamie was, <laughs> yeah, Jamie it's a good call. 
He had to push forward. The ride just looked like it drew 18. <laughs> Bank Bankmore set up a too quick of a speed. He had to get up outside him. Um, Valiant King, lightly raced, has form around the Melbourne Cup favourite, Vauban, over this distance. He's likely going to settle midfield the fence. Um, Tommy's girl, Jamie Carr, in the saddle. I think he is an enormous price. What have we got at the moment? No. You're looking, oh, he's been a little bit of support. 1941 sort of since 13. the last horse won from gate one. Eight really? years. You're a man of history? Good stat. No, I just heard it on the radio. That's a good stat, though. Yeah. But this is what you this, bring this to the This will go down, literally, in the history books yeah. if it wins from gate one. It will. Well, at least I get some good odds to find out. <laughs> Reese, how are you playing the race? Look, clearly all the proper imports can win. I would not be shocked. Obviously, we know imports can measure up in our races completely. Of the locally trained horses, I think without a fight has to be a definite. He's been aimed for this race. Zara's been booked for him a long way out. He clearly likes the horse. Um, Francesco Guardi, I think, is going really well. Um, and Solcom, I think, is dead set flying. Gets him with 53 and a half. Should get a lovely run from six. It's just typical Willow to win a, you know, Caulfield Cup after he's, you know, obviously had a little bit of controversy throughout Has the he? season. Yes, What's funnily enough. <laughs> well, I'll fill you in after the show. Um, I, I, look, I actually think it's going to be won by one of the horses pretty firm in the market. I'll be shocked if it's something any more than sort of 15th, 16th. I think it's quite an open race. Um, but those ones down the bottom, even though they've got the weight swings, I, I don't. I think that is making up the numbers in this year's Cup. But, yeah, incredible race. Um, I actually quite like it because I, I, I don't think there's a, a proper import that's coming across. It's a dead set standout. And we think, oh, well, if it turns up at its best, we can't possibly beat it. I think it's just a really even Caulfield Cup and I can't wait to watch it on the weekend. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's depth. Depth central, isn't it? Two things, two questions. Spirit Ridge mm. comes here with the highest rating by just fine last start. Um, I've actually specced Spirit Ridge each way at 81s during the week. Um, leads, I would be surprised if it just gives a sight anyway, as um, huge gap back to third in that metro. Um, Calipore hasn't exactly franked the form, but we saw um, military mission. Mm. God bless you. You'd have to dead set fall over if you saw... Spirit Ridge, Spirit Ridge win a Caulfield Cup after the end of last prep running third in a Grafton Cup. Like I know, it, it's amazing. It's but almost mind-boggling. But that, that run in the Metrop was outstanding. Yeah, no, 100% so agree. 100% agree. Um, and SP, good on for SP getting the horse. SP $41 last start, then comes into a Caulfield Cup. It would yeah. be some story. But. Um, the other ones we haven't touched on, and a huge... Um, Have we not touched on some? <laughs> Montefilia. <laughs> Should have uh, won it last year, in my opinion. Was enormous in this race last mm. year. Maybe better on a soft track, but what um, Montefilia did last start, Nash went on and... Looked like a different horse. Um, Nash offs. I know I had to get to 54 and a half, Nash, but big jockey changer. No disrespect to Black Sheen. He's riding very well, but Nash, what Nash did and what he does to some horses and yep. suits them perfectly. Is... I, I tell you what completely shocked me yesterday is when I saw the change come through and I realised Black Sheen didn't have a ride in it. Yeah. I was... I was like, I just automatically thought he had a ride in it. But then obviously weight comes into it a lot. What does he There's ride to? Oh, that's dead set. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. about his minute. And he could even be riding at a half over because I know Nash was riding her a half over. So he might be as well. But that's obviously the biggest thing as to why he didn't have a ride. And I'm just having a look. Uh, Ollie doesn't have a ride either, does he? So there would be a lot of riders that would generally get a ride in this race that just there were so many down the bottom of the weights that they couldn't. It's amazing, ride, ride. and I've said this before on the show, there's amazing lack of depth 54 and below in Melbourne. Sydney jockeys, there's a lot, and there's a lot of them here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Coston, McAvoy, yeah. Um, Tim Clark. Oh, to be fair, so. C. Heffel, J. Carr, D. Yendall, C. Newitt, yeah, Al Meach, J. Jockeys, McNeil. A few. Mm. You mean three quarters of them. Yeah, but they're all getting down <laughs> specifically as well, a lot of them for 54. A lot of them wouldn't ride it Wednesday. Anyway. <laughs> there's not. I don't think the depth is great. Fair enough, yeah. Let's yeah. move on to race 10. The final race on the card. Uh, I'm scared. I'm looking at the run sheet. Reese and I are landing on the same mm. horse. It's the listed Alingi Stakes. It's for the Phillies and Mares. It's run over 1,100 metres. Uh, it's a very fine red. Won the race last year. Maliva in 2021. California Zimble in 2020. Map wise, uh, hypothetical from one H2O if they go here. Um, is Jewel Nommed. Um, looks a key speed influence. Vivian, she's just a mare in super form, winning five on the trot. Um, she'll push forward with Damien Lane in the saddle, no doubt. Uh, Tommy, no opinion on the race? Uh, oh, I found it very tough. Vivian's continued to prove peak performances, looking to win six on the trot, if you don't mind. Mm. Um, the ratings, her, she's really progressed. Her last mm. two have been clearly her best runs. Um, 
awful barrier for her that looks strong speed, hypothetical H2O. So if H2O comes out, um, that helps. That'll help, and mm. I'll probably be keen on Vivienne, but um, I just worry that she might be three deep, no cover um, on Vivienne, or have to exert a lot of energy to cross. Um, Vespertine, I went looking for Vespertine here. Uh, very well weighted at the set weight. She's a 95 handicap rider carrying the same weight as Little Miss Kirby, who's 77 rider. Um, class horse off a Queensland campaign. I went looking for Vespertine. Wheelinger Beast, another one I went looking for, but best form on wets. Um, Gennady, off a strong win, 1250 yeah. at Kenzo. Um, has some chance, and the one you guys are talking about has a chance as well. I found it tough. Yeah, look, I think if Vivian turns up, how she's been going. She can easily win again and, mm. and probably should be winning again, but she has to stop at some stage. Um, and to be taking 270, you know, thinking that she's just going to continue to keep propelling, you're probably a little bit silly in a way, but you've got to back in the team. Obviously, they're happy with her at home. Um, as you said, the map could be a bit difficult for her and might possibly bring her undone. But, yeah, I'm me and Footy with one at a nice price here, Len Picker. She's airborne, this prep. Mm. Two runs being terrific. The Sandown win was just super, and then she looked in trouble around Mornington, and there weren't too many horses that made too much ground there that day. It was very firm, and she still got over the top with them with ease in the end where she looked like she was in trouble. So if you're getting sort of 15, 16 bucks about her, a mare in form, they can take fairly big leaps in grade, and I would not shock me if she runs really well here. Yeah, I agree. She's in career best form. I sort of looked into that race at Mornington because – the front, they kind of detached, yeah. didn't they? Like, and oh, I was like, oh, races. and I was thinking, oh, this must and it be a really fastly run race, but it wasn't. It, wasn't, it was, yeah. it was just they, the the front group yeah. just they just detached. And that's probably so, what gave her more credit. Yeah, you know, she, and we saw that go that, quick. that turn of foot, that yeah. acceleration. Yeah. They put up some twenty bucks about yeah, Lem Picker, crazy. and I just thought it was an absurd price to round out the day. Uh, that last start morning where she won, um, <coughs> she beat home Oracle, Oracle Sun as yep. well, who somewhat franked that form, went to Super, a harder race yeah, yesterday at Caulfield, yesterday. ran third. There's some substance to that. I think she gets a map nice run in behind the speed here. And as you said, if you want to talk about the old adage of mares in form, well, yes, Vivian is in form, but she's Len Pickers yeah. in career best form Absolutely. too. So I think it's a nice, just an each way um, bet to round out the card there. Uh, boys, that's the 10 races. We've done well. Tommy's got off the floor to do it. Really proud of you, mate. Um, before we get to our unit plays, we're going to head to Jackson Oldham this week with his take on me. Uh, take on me this week. The last few weeks, uh, the Lays have actually managed to lose, which is a bit of a foreign foreign concept to me. So I'm due to donate a bit of cash back to the punters. And this week, very well, maybe that week. It's Caulfield Cup Day, and I'm going to race six, the McCafe Sprint, and I'm going to lay number one lofty strike for D Oliver and Julius Sandu. Now, this horse beat Uncommon James in a group two in a harder race than this, last prep, first up, last preparation, but there's no great data analysis or insight here. I just think he's going absolutely no good. Off the jump outs, 59 kilos, 1,000 metres is a very, very tough, tough ask against horses who have the fitness advantage and likely the map advantage on him as well. So $3.40 is top price available at the moment. I'm going to put up $5 at $500 at $4 on Betfair to lose $1,500. That's race six, number one, lofty strike. Thanks for that, Jacko. Boys, it's time now to round out the show with our tips and our plays for the weekend, our unit staking plan. Uh, Tommy, what do you got for us, mate? Run us through how you're attacking Caulfield on Saturday. Pretty quiet day for me. Um, race five, a race that I didn't touch on too in too much detail, but I'm keen to have something on Matawai off that New Zealand win, um, point 0.1 win, point 0.3 place, and I'll have something Azula as well, uh, half a unit win on Azula. Uh, race seven, number nine, Cool Dyer, 0.2 units win, 0.8 units place. I think she'll run well um, with a better... Um, map and I'll I found it tough in the Caulfield Cup but I'll just stick to one um, without a fight each way half unit win 1.5 unit place beautiful um, Caulfield well, I think we're going to kick off with a bang Brave Mead one unit to win uh, Caulfield race two number six Gates just playing the place there one unit the place uh, race four number seven Dark Halo uh, really like that first up first up win and I think she can progress here one unit to win Laying lofty strike in race six, so I'm strongly against him. Uh, I'm going to risk two units. Uh, race seven, number two, Skew Whiff. Really liked her jump out early in the week. Um, I think they can ride her positive from gate two. And we're going to have one unit that win on her, and then we're going to the last race, Lem Picker. Um, nice each way price there. I think we're going to have a unit that win in place. 
Excellent, mate. And for me, I'm with you, Caulfield. Race one, number two, Brave Mead, 1.25 units to win. Then we'll head to Caulfield race four. I'm laying Don Corleone for a liability of two units. Caulfield race five, number 14, Moesha, 0.4 units to win, 1.2 units to place. In race six, going the hamburger with the lot, number six, Spacewalk, 2.5 units to win, lofty strike, liability of two units. If that goes the other way around, I'll be on the floor. <laughs> Caulfield race seven, waltz on by, number seven, one unit to win. Then in the Caulfield Cup, race number nine, I'm going number six, West Wind Blows, one unit to win, and number 18, Valiant King. 0.5 units to win and then in the very lucky last Caulfield race 10 number 10 Lem Picker 0.5 units to win 0.5 units to place that is how I'm attacking cup day boys Outstanding. it's been fun unpacking it with all of you Tommy thanks again mate for this is this one is of the best comeback stories correct some award yeah. I don't know if do they have Walkley this has got a bit of Norvely about it I think do they have Walkley awards <laughs> for, for gutsy performances in racing journalism and getting off the, getting off the floor because I reckon you're in line for the, one the Betfair award tonight he will basically clean up every award I think I think I think he will <laughs> um, I don't think we have one Reece, oh, any, we'll make one <laughs> Reese, any runners this weekend uh, yeah pretty busy weekend we've got one tomorrow night at the hometown Packetham um, who's that almighty will will run better than price suggests okay guarantee second run for the stable good then we're off to the little second uh provincial meeting saturday bendigo a couple of chances there horses have been running well uh the two i'm taking there super solid mac bill and then my hometown cup sunday um i'm hoping a strike there and um, we've got three runners there at this stage so um it's not yeah. the best could be in for best chance. uh best chance there is probably a horse called blesk who was My, on a backup from yes. Friday night where I thought the race shape was completely against him. He's done well between runs. Yeah, he was all right, you know? Yeah, I thought, yeah, all things considered, um, he I ran think, well enough and he can bounce back. I think I won on him at Canterbury about six years Blesk ago. Is almost he won first up for me two years ago. <laughs> came back a really good time. Tommy Berry, sorry. <laughs> Tommy Berry down yeah. the outside. Yeah. It was he's almost as old as, he's almost as, men as old as man as uncle that we mentioned <laughs> for Trainer of the Week. Well, anyway. you'll be getting it, the training performer of the week <laughs> next week. Hey, it's been great to chat. Uh, all the best this weekend and we'll be back next week on Layback with Betfair. Welcome to Layback with Betfair. Joined by the A-Team, we're back. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.